Okay, my name is Dale Huff. I own, uh, with my wife, uh, Nutriformance Fitness Therapy and Performance. We've been in business for 20 years. So we have a uh, lot of clients that are suffering from the topic that we're going to talk about, which is, is stress and kind of both how, to, how do we manage stress, how do we um, balance it throughout our day. And, and so I hope to have some good ideas for you. I've uh, read a lot about the company over the last few days, your company, and I'm really impressed that you guys do so much charitable work and I think you're very customer-centric and, and we strive to be very similar. So I hope there's some correlations and certainly after 20 years of being in business, I have dealt with a lot of stress and tried to find ways to combat it. So I hope to share both some personal um, things that I've tried to do, as well as uh, some things I've learned along the way, just either watching our clients or reading or whatever it is. So um, when you Google stress and you want to see some images of stress, this is the kind of stuff you see and right away it kind of makes you, it stresses you out a little bit, right? So we all have these things in our life. If, if you're alive, you have stress. You have to find ways to manage stress. Uh, what I'm here to try to help you with is to understand that stress can also be healthy. Stress can be productive. Stress can push us, push our boundaries to new places. So stress does not have to be overwhelming like this, um, but, but it is real. There are times you're going to feel that, certainly, right? So, um, so what is stress? Let's, let's put a definition to it. And you guys feel free to add, you know, if you have a thought, um, I'm very uh, sharing, I'd rather hear from you, you know, during the presentation, don't feel like you have to wait to the end if you have a thought. So stress, a mental or emotional strain or suspense or difficulty that causes worry or emotional tension. Does that sound right to everybody? Right, you feel the tension, you know. So. Our, our stress response, you release cortisol, and it's kind of a flight, flight or fight syndrome, and your body reacts that way. So sometimes we get tense, we get tight, we get nervous, um, but can we turn that around and turn it into a positive for our bodies? And, and yes, you, you actually can. You can, make, you can make stress work for you in a, in a positive way. So uh, the effects of stress depend a lot on the duration of it. So acute stress, you know, you get a phone call, you get a text that you have to deal with right away. You put down whatever you were doing, that's going to be acute stress. You're going to try to deal with it right at that time. Chronic stress could be dealing with an aging parent, um, you know, trouble at home, whatever it might be. That might be more chronic and long term. And, and that's the one that's going to have the most ill effects on your body. So trying to find a way to balance that, work through it, find some ways to let your body recover are the things we're going to try to share with you today. So the exposure to stress is really the thing that, that is the culprit that we're trying to manage. So, so I, this is kind of where I, I talk a lot about this. I'm guilty of a lot of it myself because we're all connected to our phones. You can't get away from it. Uh, my business is open 100 hours a week at three different locations, so I, if I don't put it down at some point, I could work literally every waking hour that I'm awake, basically, including Saturdays and Sundays. So I've had to work hard on myself to stop doing that and let somebody else take the reins when they're supposed to and, and things like that. So for you guys, we all are multitasking like crazy because we're, we're getting text messages, we're getting emails. There's so many ways to communicate. If you have a project that you're working on, one of the things that we're recommending and talking to our clients about is put your phone away. Put your phone away, give yourself a solid hour to do, or hour and a half, two hours, whatever you need to start really focusing on that project. And that project might be spending time with your family. I see so many families go to dinner now, and it happened, I'll tell you this story in a second, but the kids are on their phones, the parents are getting text messages, they're not even talking to each other, and that's a time where we should be connecting with others. And part of stress that we feel in today's world is we don't feel that connection to others because my, my daughter went to a dance at 14 years old and she said all the boys were lined up on the sides texting on their phones to each other, so they weren't even interacting at all. So 
She's like, Dad, I don't want to go to another dance. And I was thinking, man, that stinks. Like, you know, that was a big part of growing up is to have that experience. So it's pretty sad. My son had a baseball game the other day and we went to Buffalo Wild Wings with some of the team and it's a new team for him. He doesn't know many of the kids. And the waitress brought over these things that you can play video games on. I was like, no, get, don't bring that to my table. I don't, I don't want it. I want him to learn, you know, get to know this child next to him that he's never met before hardly. Like, let's interact, let's socialize. So that's a huge thing that right away, the social, the social aspect of life, like it's a Friday, right? People in the gym this morning were like, oh, happy Friday, happy Friday. And I'm thinking, well, every day should feel like Friday. Like, let's be excited about every day, not just Friday. And, and so maybe people are going to a happy hour tonight. That's a good time to connect with other people and socialize, and that's, that's got a lot of stress reduction components to it. Um, so defining a purpose, like if everybody has this sheet right here, this is something I, I use it at work almost every day. Uh, I define my day, and on the back side, I define it almost by, by time as well. Now, some of you are going to have a set requirement for your, time, your work time, but those little breaks, define what you're going to do on your break. Define, have a plan of attack, and it, it actually reduces your stress because um, one thing I'm going to do is, after putting this all together, I'm like, I need one of these at home with the kids because I want the kids to learn how to manage stress too. Like, let's lay out our plan of attack for the day. We don't have to stick to it, but at least we know some of the things we want to get done that day. So working off a list, off a timetable, helps reduce your stress. Putting the phone to the, to the wayside. I couldn't have gotten here tonight today if I didn't have my phone with me. So I'm not saying you, in our world you have to have technology, but you also have to get rid of your technology sometimes in order to disconnect, be within yourself. I'm, I'm not like a, a you know, a, what, what's it called, like a, a yogi or anything like that. I, I, but these, these things that are tried and true really do work with meditation and things like that. So. So are our smartphones making us dumb? We've, we've proven that multitasking is really inefficient when you're working on a project. So I, I kind of conclude that, yeah, my smartphone was really, you know, I had my phone, my watch turned on too for a while where I'm getting messages on my phone and my phone in my pocket's buzzing. Who's had their phone not in their pocket but actually felt it buzz in your pocket when you weren't wearing it? Has anybody done that? That's a physiological response that we've created on ourselves. And it's really alarming, isn't it? It happened to me this morning. I was like, oh man, that's so weird. Why does it do that? But th it's just a strange thing that really happens. So I'm a, obviously in our business, we do a ton of personal training. We have a lot of members and they come in many times almost in a bad mood or a negative mindset and when they leave because of the endorphin response the you know socialization of it they leave in a totally different mindset and exercise really is a miracle cure so and people think of exercise nowadays you might think of crossfit something that's really intense exercise can be very moderate it can be going for a walk if if you go uh, just a few times a day for a two-minute walk, it offsets the, the ill effects of prolonged sitting. So plan it in your day to just, you know what, our, our uh, director of finance, she's really good about this. I'll see her. She'll get up and she'll walk around our whole building two or, two or three times. It's less than five minutes. She disengages from her work. She'll either call her husband personally on the phone, not text with him, call him while she's walking, or she leaves everything back and she just walks and clears her mind. And it's really powerful. It's better outside than inside, but inside still has some positive effects. Uh, so walking is really, really important. Uh, we're gonna do the breathing stuff in a second, so I'll, I'll give you that. And we're gonna talk about posture in a second, but um, you know, at the very, very least, you wanna, you wanna walk. And if you can build up to 20, 30 minutes a day, before work, after work. One of the best things that, that I make my kids do on the weekends and they get mad at me, or Friday, probably when I get home, I'm gonna have them just either walk or ride the neighborhood because it clears their head, they come out and they're fresh, and, and it changes their perspective of their day. 
tell me, someone tell me what you think of when you see this picture. New day, new opportunities. New day, new opportunities? Sunrise. Okay. Anybody get like a, oh man, that's kind of relaxing, a thought like that? Someone mentioned hunting earlier. And I, I contend a lot of people really fall in love with hunting, not necessarily for you know, the big buck or whatever it is, but they love to be in nature and they get a really profound effect from being out there in a deer stand surrounded by nature. Surrounding yourself with even looking at a picture like this has a great impact on stress reduction. So managing the sim symptoms of stress. It's, it's a weird thing, but it really is true. So here's two things we're going to try. Um, Everybody grab, or pull your chair out away from your desk a little bit. And this is a breathing exercise. Again, it's, it, it can become full meditative, but um, learning how to breathe properly is actually, you guys, you guys know that feeling of where you get stress in your traps and maybe your lower back aches. A lot of times it's because of poor posture and breathing incorrectly. Uh, a lot of breathing has become kind of upper chamber where you feel your shoulders rise, you feel your chest rise. And there's a lot of reasons why that occurs. But what r breathing really should be is, and we'll do this together, but you inhale through your nose. You should feel your diaphragm, your belly kind of lower back, fill with air. And then you exhale through your mouth. Do, let's do that three or four times together and just see what your, body, what your body tells you. Now, you might notice that you're, you're breathing and you're, going, you're feeling this. You gotta try to get away from that and it takes a little practice, so let's try it. So breathe in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. And I just did the first one wrong because I really struggled with this. I felt my whole chest rise. So breathe in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. Do a couple more. What do you feel? This is really interesting. We only use about, I think the stat is about 60% of our lung capacity, you know, unless you're training aerobically or something like that. So to fill that space is really healthy for your body. So a big inhale through the nose, hold it for a little bit, make it fill your diaphragm, exhale through your mouth. Anybody? Anybody want to comment on how that feels? Does it feel weird? Different than what you've been doing? Now I'm not telling you to go around during your day like that, but <coughs> as a way, let's say you get off a stressful phone call or you, you know, whatever it is that kind of stressed you out a little bit, take two seconds, do this at your desk, and it will, it will help you manage the symptoms of stress. Very strange. Now, so the other part of that is posture. And so working at your desk, prolonged sitting, usually ends up like this, right? We're here. So what happens when you do that is everything, go, you know, your traps get tight, your shoulders are malaligned from where they should be. There's a lot of pressure on your lower back, what's called your thoracic spine that we call your T-spine. So I want to give you a quick thing you can do at your desk that again is, if anybody plays golf or anything like this, this is probably the number one exercise you can do for your golf game. Sit on the end of your chairs, we're going to cross your right leg over your left and again this takes no time at all hands go behind the head and we're going to practice that breathing at the same time so you're going to rotate to the right breathe in through your nose you're going to exhale as you laterally flex so watch me do this for a second laterally flex What's magical about this is you come up in the exact same spot and it frees your spine up to allow you to go a little bit more. So let's do it together. So let's start straight on. Inhale through your nose. Rotate. Laterally flex into it as you exhale. Come right back up where you finished and magically you're going to be able to go a little bit further. So try to go a little bit further. So we'll go three times each way. Don't come back to where you started. Always stop and start where you ended up here. And let's go one more. You should be able to get three, three times and that'll end up at your farthest T-spine rotation position. 
Okay, let's go the other direction. So same thing. So now we're going to switch the legs though. So cross your left leg over your right. Hands behind head. Inhale through your nose. Rotate, flex into it. Exhale as you go down. Come right back up at that same position. You should be able to go a little bit further. Flex into it. Come right back up where you were. And one more. So you should be able to go just maybe another inch or two further. Yeah, that's really good. And now just kind of shake your arms out. What does your back, lower back feel like? Somebody might have gotten a cramp. Did anybody get a cramp in their trap at all? So your body's like, what are you doing to me right now? But that is the number one thoracic spine stretch that like all the uh, PGA players utilize. And it's an easy thing to do at your desk any, any time. So breathing, T-spine stretch, all of a sudden your traps feel a little different. Your lower back feels a little different. The symptoms of stress manifest themselves in your body, but at the same time, we're doing it to ourselves because we're not aware of our posture. We're kind of slouching over. Uh, so we can make some small improvements in just how your body feels, and that's going to help how your body reacts to stress, too. So there's a mental and a physical to all this stuff. So let's talk about how the best in the world in terms of athletes respond to stress. Um, anybody's child plays sports, the parent gets stressed out on the sidelines, the kid gets, let's say they're playing baseball, they go up to the plate, they're not sure how to handle that pressure either. The best in the world, the way they do it is they recognize the stress, they say, I'm going to use this to fuel my, my performance, I'm going to own it instead of, I'm gonna tamp this down, I don't wanna feel this. I wanna feel it, I wanna recognize this, I'm alive. So stress is part of work, part of life, um, part of sport, and I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna figure out how can I reframe this to be a positive for me. Um, you know, the, the playoffs are going on right now for baseball and some of those guys are coming up with great hits and plays during really stressful moments of the game. How the heck do they do that, man? It's so cool, like to get on stage and, and perform at that level. It's, it's because they own it. They're ready for it. They've prepared themselves for it. But at the same time, they, in the moment, they're recognizing that, hey, stress is gonna be here. I'm gonna deal with it. I'm gonna go on with my day. I'm gonna play the best I can, and, and there we go. So, so you have to reframe your stress to be a challenge. So. Um, when we were asked to do this presentation, I was like, man, we haven't updated our camera in probably seven or eight years. <laughs> so what are we gonna do, you know? And, and so I hate technology because it, it always treats me wrong, but I was like, with my 10 year old son helping me last night, we're like, all right, here's how we're gonna do this. And he's way better than I am. So we, we figured it out. So the mindset has to change. You, you have to change from being a fixed mind where, you know, something is a burden instead of it being a burden, how do I frame this to making me a better person? How do I frame this to help me excel at life? And it's a weird, it's a weird thing that happens. Like I hate reading uh, directions, you know, but, it, but when you do and you fail, you're like, okay, I could, I could get frustrated right now. I'm tending to do that. Or I can go back and let's say, figure it out because I want to learn this. So that's really, having that challenge response instead of letting it let it stress create is really powerful when you do that it's actually more healthy for your biology so instead of releasing releasing cortisol and feeling the stress you release uh, DHEA which is another kind of a protein precursor and it's going to help you manage symptoms and, and actually people that manage their stress well prolong their lives as you would imagine they just they just you, you guys have seen I have two clients that come to mind at both ends of the spectrum. One has MS, she's in a wheelchair, and it could be the dead of winter, six inches of fresh powder on the ground outside. She's knocking on our door. She might be the only car in the parking lot because she, and she's smiling, she's ready to go. And it's unbelievable. And look at her situation. It's a pretty, you know, terrifying situation to, to be in that. On the other hand, Hyper wealthy client walks in every day is awful, you know, no matter what. And it's just like, 
you have everything, but yet you're letting you're letting your life control you so much that it's everything's a negative. Like, get a grip. So we we inflict this on ourselves, and it you can look at things so many different ways. So you can find this if you guys wanted to pull this up where you could actually see it more. If you kind of Google images of fixed mindset, there's some really good things there to help help you kind of think through that. So we talked about the kitchen, and there's something called um, decision fatigue, and we all suffer from this, so, and we don't even know. I find myself doing this a lot. My wife's like, what do you want to do tonight? And I was like, I, I, don't, I don't care, because I've already made 45 decisions before that. So having a plan, like President Obama, what he did is, and I don't know if, if this is followed with the next president or not, but he wore the same suit every day. He ate the same thing for lunch every day. He wanted to reduce every decision that was minute to his day. Now this is a really powerful position, right? That, that you can imagine the stress. I mean, they, they look like the age 40 years by the time they get out of there. But if you can make decisions earlier in your day, a, a lot of people have gotten in the habit of, I'm just gonna go to Chick-fil-A or whatever it is on the way home because I, I just don't have the mental capacity to plan to have to have a plan at this point. So we're huge on the crock pot at home. You throw it in, it cooks all day. You know, prim primarily we're just throwing whatever the meat is in there. <coughs> End of the day, season it up, add whatever you want. The meal's done in five, 10 minutes and you're ready to go. It's, it's amazing. Now a lot of people will batch cook on Sundays. I, we don't because that's when we're spending time with our families and, and doing, you know, doing things, but a lot of people do that and swear by it. Um, we're better with more of this approach of having a plan, you know, certainly getting to the grocery store uh, earlier in the week is better than all of a sudden, you know, you don't have anything at home. That's when, when the downward slide starts to occur, I think. So some other quick, easy tricks. Uh, a multivitamin actually, whether it works or not, and we could debate that because there's research to show both ways, taking a multivitamin sets the mindset of I'm going to have a healthy day. If it, is it a placebo effect? Maybe. I don't know. So doing little things like that that just sort of set your mindset, it'll help you throughout the rest of the day. Glass of water in the morning, first thing when you get up, it stimulates your, your um, metabolism right before you go to bed. Does anybody get a lot of cramps at bedtime? So a, a probably magnesium right before bre bed and a glass of water would, would really help that. Um, anything you can do to disrupt your sleep, you got to do it because sleep is all, all the uh, athletes view recovery as much as at a high level as they do whatever they're training for. So the recovery part of that, and, and we're all, you know, working like crazy, stress, you know, stress is mounting, but yet we're staying up too late. The average American, guess how long the average American sleeps per night right now? Five hours. Who said that? Six. So yeah. What do you think we need on an, av on an average night? We're going to actually have a slide on this in a second, but it's so important to reinforce. Yep. Yeah, <coughs> seven or eight for adults, 10 to 12 for kids. So we're always trying to wake up our teenagers, let them sleep. They actually did a study and it's in this book. Um, if you guys like to read, this is an amazing book on this topic, but they did a research study on uh, Stanford athletes and they trained them for a six week period. I'm, I'm gonna make some of this up because I don't have it exactly in mind, but let's say they trained them for six weeks and they just did their normal sleep patterns. They did the exact same workout for the next six weeks and they told them, sleep as much as you want. Sleep as much as you want for the whole six weeks. And the findings were, they, the gains they made on this side were incredibly greater than over here. So sleep is performance. And, and we've gotten out of that thinking because of the multitasking, the we're always available to everyone at all times anymore. So I have clients that will travel to China and all of a sudden they don't realize where they are and they're texting me and it's the middle of the night for me. And I'm like, oh, 
Come on. So I think we covered everything on that slide. Oh, caffeine. We got to touch about caffeine. <coughs> Everybody's drinking energy drinks. These things are killers. They're really, really bad for you, especially if you're doing happy hour and you're doing the Red Bull and vodka kind of stuff. You know, it's really, really bad. So no caffeine five to six hours before sleep. Alcohol is also, it makes you fall asleep faster, but it's gonna disrupt your sleep later. So people that are thinking, oh, I'm gonna have a glass of wine before I go to bed, which a lot of our clients do, it's the wrong, it's the wrong thing to do. So. How about that multivitamin in the evening you're saying there? Multivitamin in the evening, that's gonna get rid of things like the cramps, the, uh, it, it'll, help, it, it'll help you sleep better in, in different ways. Things, if, if anybody's struggling with that, with the cramps. It, I had it for a long time where People that drink soda get a lot of cramps at night, and Diet Coke's probably the worst. Uh, regular Coke's probably second worst. So if you're drinking multiples of those a day, I would almost guarantee you're cramping because it's leaching minerals out of your, out of your muscles, and you're going to end up cramping at night. You have to kind of wean yourself off that and get heavier on the water. Go tea, go anything else will probably prevent that. So what, what is different from coffee than the soda from the caffeine uh, Well, the diet sodas are all full of artificial sweeteners and things like that. Uh, the Cokes are really, you know, sugar, high in sugar. Not that some coffees aren't as well. Coffee's just a more natural product. So, it's, you're still going to get some leaching. It's going to cause some dehydration, but it's not at the same level. Plus, people most of the time don't drink coffee all day long. Some people do, but you don't see it quite as much where Coca-Cola people will drink six or seven in a day, we see sometimes. So it, it gets, you know, I think a lot of it's volume. So if you drank one Coke in the morning, probably be the equivalent of having your cup of coffee, but most people aren't able to do that. So does that answer? Well, somewhat, okay. yeah. I mean, somewhat. Just trying to see what the, the difference is because of the caffeine content or is it yeah. the additives? It, yeah, it's more the additives for sure, and I think it's the prolonged use throughout the day would be the other thing. Um, if you can't get yourself off Coke, get the mini ones and just drink one of those a day. It's, that's going to be a lot better. So I mentioned the bedroom. This is not my child, but I just love this picture because he was so cute. Um, my kids I didn't like till they were about 14 months old. I had twins. I have an older daughter and I have twins that are 10 now, but Man, the twins, I think, I think the number is 50% of uh, spouses get divorced if you have tw multiples, so it was a rough time. Um, so here's your stat. 40% sleep less than six. The average is down to 6.8. So um, what we're all doing, and I, I'm guilty of this too, so this is something I'm really trying to wean myself off of all the time, but we get our iPads, we get our phones, we jump in bed or we turn on the TV, Next thing you know, an hour's gone by, and that blue light exposure is gonna, it's gonna delay your REM sleep. So it's gonna delay that by about 90, 90 minutes, which means you're not gonna get that deep, comfortable recovery sleep that we all need. And then we're, gonna, then we're gonna cut it short too, so we're gonna get up in six hours. That REM sleep might not even occur, or if it does occur, we're gonna interrupt it, and you're gonna feel not very good the next day. So, what does REM stand for again? Uh, that's that deep, rapid eye movement sleep that, that really allows your body to you know, release all the hormones, and it's very, very productive. And the weird thing is with this is the last seven to nine hours of sleep are the most productive for your body. And we're not even getting it. We're not even getting close to it. So you have to recover to perform. And we're all guilty of it, myself included. I'm, I'm only relaying the information. I'll, I'll point my finger at myself as much as you guys want me to. But um, we talked about alcohol. And it, it does. Like, it takes courage to rest. Like, my wife's a night owl. I'm a morning person. I like to get up early. I like to feel good. Um, so I literally have to say, come lay in bed with, with me and let's talk in bed. Because I'm going to probably fall asleep in a half an hour, you know. And so she'll do that sometimes, but she'll also, she's guilty of the stay up late, watch her favorite show, because she finally got the kids off her back and into bed. So that's kind of her, 
her time too, but I need to work on her a little bit more to, to balance that out some. What is ETOH? Alcohol, sorry, yeah, the ETOH is just the, the medical abbreviation for alcohol. So alcohol does mess with your sleep and you know the other thing with alcohol is that if too much is going to ruin your next day at least a half half day so trying using those happy hours everybody loves that it, it's friday night but using those happy hours for a social function instead of a i'm going to have you know five or six beers that's going to ruin your next day you're going to lose your productivity you're going to be mad at yourself and you know when you think about your weekend, you only have, what, 20 hours for the whole weekend? So if five of them are shot, you just shot 25% of your weekend for probably nothing, you know, for a waste. So Could you have that glass of wine earlier, like five with, with dinner? Would that help? Um, yeah, you know, I think so. But I, I really, we coach our clients a lot on trying to use alcohol only on the weekends. So because it's empty calories it, it also lowers your the ability to make to be decisive you're just going to be like yeah i'll have another glass of wine or i'm going to have that snack that i really wasn't planning on uh, and it, it also does make you a little more lethargic too so if, if your only time to exercise is at night and you're having a glass of wine at dinner you're not going to go out on a walk or go out on a bike ride or or anything like that and, you know and it, it, so I'd say if, if you love wine, I'd save it for the weekends and say, do it after the majority of your day is done. With dinner, if you're socializing, of course it's going to happen and, and you're not going to be able to prevent that and I don't want you to because that's part of a social component as well. So it's all about finding what works for you. These are all things that are just informational. You know, finding the moderation, the balance, finding the the ways to reduce your decisions in your life, the finding the ways to disconnect from your phone. Um, I, I've tried it and it's really, really hard to get in my office and focus on something for an hour and go put my phone in, in somewhere else outside of my office, which is what they recommend. It's very hard for me, so I'll put it on mute. I'll put it as far away from me as I can in my office. And it, you'll, you'll feel yourself, it'll gravitate. It's like one of those Ouija boards, whatever those are, where they pull you toward it. It's weird. So this quote is from a five-year cancer survivor, or five-time cancer survivor. Um, this was just in, uh, she wrote an article that was in the Ledoux News, I think it was, and just last week. If you get up every day and believe it will be a better day, you will get where you want to go. So... That's a pretty powerful message from somebody that's beaten cancer five times to me. Imagine, you know, the stress, the physical pain, the, the worry, all of that mounting in your body, and she's up and ready to go. She's going to fight it, you know. You guys have probably all had friends that have been stricken with some sort of a, of a disease, and you can watch their mindset almost helps them either beat the disease or succumb to the disease. One of our favorite clients really worked hard, always had fun, got breast, got breast cancer probably six months ago, and her first reaction was, I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna go take care of this and I'll be back. She started back last week. And she was totally right, never lost her mindset about being positive, ready to go. Talk about stress. So. It's all up here. It's all figuring out ways to reduce the symptoms of stress in your life. You're not gonna be able to avoid stress. You don't, you don't want to or else you're not alive. You're probably under the ground. Stress is gonna hit you. It's gonna hit you hard. It's gonna hit you in many different ways. Figuring out how to manage the chronic stress. Uh, maybe it's an aging parent or whatever it is. That's the key, because you're not gonna avoid it, but you're gonna have to find a way to balance it in your lives. What questions do you guys have? Thoughts? Can we take questions from the people on the phone? Mm -hmm. How do we do that? <coughs> just, just, did we just do that? Do you guys have any questions? Yeah. Well, thank you guys for your time. Thank you. Do those exercises, the breathing and the, the T-spine stretch.
surprising how little time that it takes to do. Right. How much it needs for it takes nothing. It's it's, and your body's going to appreciate it. It's almost everything in life. To put things off and it takes two minutes to put it up. Sneak it in there. Yeah, sneak it in there. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to.